Hello friends, today we talk about your design of experiments. So in this video, we talk about the learning objectives of design of experiments and the basic concepts of factorial design. So let's get started. Uh, here are the concepts we're learning in this chapter. So we we'll create and analyze factorial designs to, under, uh, to find the optimal setting of multiple factors in a process. So you know that many factors go into producing the most durable paint, the strongest alloy or the quickest customer service resolution. Factorial designs offer an organi uh, organized approach to analyzing these different factors with the goal of finding the best combination of settings. We use block to account for unwanted variation in an Experiment blocking is a design strategy that helps you account for unwanted variation in the process. In other words, it allows you to block out the effect of a nuisance factor. You will learn how to incorporate and analyze blocks in a factorial this, uh, experiment. Uh, we use center points to detect curvature in the design. Uh, space and estimate error without replicating kind of uh, In an experiment, the factor settings tell us a lot about the performance of a process. At a factor, uh, at a fact, um, <coughs> a factor settings we choose. But what happens between those settings? Center points can tell us whether the relationship between the response and factors is linear or Covilinear. Okay, we uh, next we create and analyze <coughs> fractional factorial designs to find optimal settings of multiple factors in a process without running a full design. A full factorial design involving numerous factors can quickly become too expensive or time consuming to uh, execute. A fractional factorial design offers similar returns with a paired out set of runs. Finally, we use uh, Minitab's response optimizer to find optimum factor settings. So, how do we choose the best settings for our factors? The response optimizer determines which combination of factor settings, whether it is one of the tested combinations or some combination in between produces the optimum response. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about the basic concept of factorial design. Uh, for example, ABC company manufactures pen and primer, uh, primer, pen and primer. Uh, the pen company supplies pen to several auto manufacturers to ensure a smooth finished surface. A coat of primer is used on the exterior of an automobile to provide a consistent surface before applying paint. The effectiveness of the primer can be measured by paint adhesion. The force required to pull the paint from the base metal. The process improvement team at ABC would like to determine which of the two primer types works best for, the, for their customers. But the team knows that primer time is not only variable it needs to consider. The pressure at which the pen is pried onto the metal also affects adhesion. So how can ABC team determine which combination of primer type and spray pressure provides the most adhesion for their customer? The company can use a design experiment. Experiments are used in a variety of fields and industries. The goal of an experiment is to better understand a process, usually so it can, you can be systematically improved. A design experiment allows us to understand how key input variables in a process are related to key output variables. 
in a design experiment, treatments are randomly assigned to the form of experiment unit. An experimental unit is a unit to which one treatment is assigned, assigned or applied. In the pain adhesion experiment, the treatments are, combination, are a combination of the primer type and pressures. The experimental units are the metal samples that will be painted and tested for adhesion. Much like what we learned in ANOVA chapter, the input variable in, the, in a design experiment are called factors. Factors are controlled independent variables whose levels are set by, an, by the experimenter. The levels of a factor are the settings that are tested in an experiment. In Chapter ANOVA, we learn about researchers at IBC. They were in investigating the effects of two factors, uh, the robot type and product type. That study was actually an example of a design experiment where the objective was to understand how two different how two different products were dispensed using two different droppers. Review the analysis of variance chapter to understand factors, levels, main effects, and interactions. In this chapter, we'll build on what we already learned in chapter ANOVA to analyze factorial designs. Okay, so let's return to the pain adhesion experiment. IBC company can use a factorial design which allows us to simultaneously evaluate the effects of several factors on a process. A full factorial experiment measures a core combination of the, of the experiment factor levels. Varying le of the levels of the factors simultaneously rather than individual has two benefits. It saves time and expense. It reviews the interaction between the factors. The process improvement team wants to understand the main effects of primer time and spray pressure, and also any interaction that may exist between these factors. For example, <coughs> suppose <coughs> primer A causes pain to adhere better than primer B at a spray pressure of 400 kPa. In comparison, primer B works better than primer uh, A at a low press, uh, spray pressure. In fact, much better than primer A at high spray pressure. In this case, we would say there is a significant interaction between these factors because the average response for the levels of primer type depends on the level setting of spray pressure. Suppose we use one factor at a time experimental strategy to study primer type and spray pressure. If we were to begin by testing both primers at one level of spray pressure, for example 400 kPa, we would select a primer A because it results in greater pain adhesion. Then we would vary uh, spray pressure using a uh, primer A and discover that as the pressure decreases, adhesion decreases, adhesion decreases, uh, we would conclude that primer A using high spray pressure is the best choice. Is the best choice. The problem with it one factor at a time approach is that we didn't consider the interaction between these factors, an investigation of all combination of factors and levels would be revealed that primer B with lower spray pressure results in better adhesion than primer A at high pressure. We use factorial designs to answer important questions about our factors. Which factors most strongly influence the response? Do interactions between two or more factors influence the response? Which factor settings optimize the response? 
Although design exper experiments have a wide range of applications, consider this general guidelines when using them. We must understand our problem so that we can define the objectives of study. They include selecting appropriate responses. We then choose the factors we want to evaluate and determine reasonable ranges for each. The response is what we will measure for each combination of the factor levels. In this chapter, we assume all responses are continuous. Uh, we need to determine what type of design to use for our experiment based on uh, the factors we are investigating and the response we are measuring. After selecting approach the design, then we uh, execute, execute the experiment and evaluate the data using statistical and graphical techniques. Then we verify the results, then make recommendations about the process. A successful experiment, uh, experimental designs incorporate both process knowledge and statistical, or statistical procedures. Process knowledge is invaluable in the design stage as, we, as well as in the evaluation of results. Also keep in mind that process improvement using experimental design is commonly an interactive approach. Rarely we would run a large comprehensive design in which final conclusions are made. A series of smaller designs can help us move to the optimal setting for a process while man min minimizing interruption and cost. Later in this chapter, we will learn about fractional factorial designs, a subset of the full factorial design. So let's review. Factorial designs allow us to simultaneously evaluate the effects of several factors on a process. Factorial designs can identify which factors most strongly influence the response. Factorial, uh, factorial designs have determined the, the optimal settings for factors. Thank you for your listening. In the next lesson, we'll talk about the full factorial design.